Hello and welcome to this little tutorial explaining how I made that video with the hole in my head. I had no intention of harming myself of course when making that video and you will see in the original footage that I took with my iPhone camera that I only covered my eye with a patch, a piece of green tape, in order to key out the green color later. As you will see that it, it wasn't really a good patch because it was shiny and the color turned out to be not uniform so I had to apply an animated mask later. But more important was to put those dark markers on my face for the object tracking technique in Blender. Remember that 8 or more markers that are visible throughout the duration of the scene are needed for a good tracking. An angle of the eye patch served as the additional tracking point. After the footage was rendered into separate frames in a PNG format, I did the motion tracking of the markers on my face. No secrets here, it was a pretty standard procedure in Blender. Then I solved the scene. The error factor was not extremely good, but it was still less than 3, and it appeared to be sufficient. Again, in a pretty standard way, I created a 3D scene with the original footage as a background in the camera view. Then I go to the camera view and I check that the trackers are sitting well uh, on the dots of my face. That's good. And this process actually makes the camera move in the 3D space. Trackers are standing, staying still. Next is the interior of the hole in the head. It was just a cylinder, simply made slightly jammed, added a, a few modifiers and the texture which was just an image of a raw meat that I found on the internet. More important was to have the dimension of the cylinders approximately reflecting the ratio between the diameter of the head and the size of the eye. Then the cylinder was positioned and scaled over the eye. As I said, the trackers are not moving in the 3D space. Once positioned, the cylinder does not need to be animated at all. Then I added the sunlight in the 3D space, uh, following the direction uh, from the sun in the actual video. And then I rendered uh, only the cylinder on the transparent background in a series of images. Now it's time to work with the compositor, but before the compositor I had to add and animate a mask around my eye patch. The alpha channel will replace the green by the keying note of the compositor only inside this mask. In the compositor now, I have the input from my original footage, which is, I remind you, was rendered into an image sequence. Another input is coming from the mask node through an invert node connected to the core matte socket of the keying node. I boosted the blur, a pre-blur parameter to help with the most shiny part of the eye patch and set the dilate, erode and feeder parameters to negative values giving thus a smoother edge of the hole in the face. Next, I took the input from the images of the rendered cylinder and combined them with the output of the key node into an alpha over node. Here is the result. Now, remember this piece with the hand going behind my head? It added some more wow effect to the video, but it appeared to be the most troublesome part of the video. I needed an image of the hand, which I took by choosing a frame where my hand was fully visible just before going behind my head. I added a detailed mask around it. Both the image of that frame and the mask were added to the set alpha node in the compositor. So, now I have a hand on the transparent background. I added color balance to darken the hand because it's supposed to be blocked from the sunlight behind my head. Just a bit of blur, and then I added the transform node. This node had to be keyframed over the time when my hand moves behind my head. This was the tricky part, because this motion had to be matched closely with the movement of my hand in the original footage. You can see how many keyframes are there in just two seconds of this piece. When the work is done, I set the inputs in the correct order in yet another alpha node 
and the hand is now behind my back. Next, I still need to make the hole transparent, so the wall of the house will be visible through it. Here I used one frame from the end of the video, where I'm almost out of the frame. I added a translate node for a perfect match with the rest of the wall of the house, and again, another alpha node to combine the picture with the result of the previous step. Now, how about these dots of my face? I need to get rid of them. I found the right node set up looking for over a few tutorials on the internet. The dots move around, so I had to mask each of them and animate the mask. The animation is done simply by parenting the masks to the trackers, which were created at the motion tracking stage. Now we return to the compositor. We are already familiar with the animated masks, so it's a similar story here. But instead of the keying node, we now have a set alpha node, which replaces the masks with the alpha channel. The color here is uh, green just because the uh, background of the compositor is green, but it's actually transparent. And then there is like in-paint node there, additionally. The in-paint node fills the area with the surrounding color. And you can control how much deeper you go in the surrounding by the distance parameter. Then there is also a blur node to make the transition softer. Like that. Then I grouped all this additional set of notes in a group and put it between the original footage and the keying note. And voila, my face is now digitally washed. And our final touch. When I take the bandage off, the gas moves behind my head, so it should be visible through the hole for a split second. In fact, here in only this one frame. I could ignore one frame, but I decided to edit it, and in the end this single frame made the whole effect more believable. The method here is like with the house wall in the background. I took the same frame and moved it with the transform node, so that the gas will be in the position of the hole. Then it's another alpha over node, and uh, where I make, when I make the order of inputs correct, the second image goes behind the original. Here we go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I didn't make it for the absolute beginners, but I would be glad if those of you who are already familiar with Blender can find some ideas for their own projects. Thank you, and happy blendering!